to Coco Tea TV, everyone. Today, guys, I wanted to bring something totally different to you. Uh, it is Mental Health Awareness Month. And during this month, I just really want to highlight some of the conversations uh, that need to be had on mental health. And I got an expert here with me today, y'all. We are going to be eating and talking. We're having a lunch and learn. And I want to thank you for um, being on the show today and lending your office. Well, thank you for <laughs> coming into my office and sharing the space and bringing this good food. Yes, we got some chicken salad chick, y'all. And um, I'm gonna show y'all a close up of it. Uh, we're having to make things work out today because we really, the conversation is more important than the food today, but we do want y'all to see the food. Um, we got some chicken salad, different flavors. And I didn't know what you wanted, but I brought you some barbecue chicken salad. Never had a barbecue chicken okay. salad. Okay, some lemon basil. Okay. Have you had that? Nope. Okay, and then I got you Olivia's Old South, which is a traditional okay. chicken salad. Um, and then I got myself a scoop of pimento cheese and some barbecue in the Olivia's Old South. So those are some of my favorites from this place called Chicken Salad Chick. Y'all let me know down in the comments if you've ever eaten Chicken Salad Chick. Um, they started out here in the South, but they're starting to be all over now. So let me know if y'all have tried it out. But um, I'm going to let my guest here introduce himself. I'm Jacques Austin, as you mentioned, a licensed professional counselor. And I've been in counseling since 1997. Um, worked with adults and adolescents over a number of years and also served as the president of the Alabama Counseling Association, um, just recently coming off of that uh, three-year tenure. Um, also the um, executive director of a nonprofit called Brother Let's Talk, where we're really uh, aimed at increasing the emotional wellness and mental health awareness among uh, men of color. Yes. Well, thank you. Yes. And that is why I wanted to reach out to you. I know we have some business dealings we've done over the years, and I just want to thank you for your expert uh, knowledge that you're going to be able to provide to the audience today on Coco TV. So again, thank you. And I will be leaving all of his contact information in the description as we continue this conversation. Drop some comments down, comments and questions down in the description box because, I mean, this conversation might get so good today that we might need to have him back on for another Lunch and Learn uh, before the month is out since May is Mental Health Awareness Month. But uh, we're going to get into this good eating today. Yes. Uh, let us uh, say a quick oh. prayer. If you will pray, uh, <laughs> pray for us today. Hearts composed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Heavenly Father, an opportunity to come together and uh, break bread. We ask that you bless it, that it nourishes and strengthens our body. But we ask that something is said today that is impactful in the hearts and lives of those that are viewing. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, let's start diving in. But while we dive in, you know, I do want to kind of learn a little bit about uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. I know it's a topic that sometimes doesn't get discussed, but, you know, would love to get your insight on it because I know that you probably see it more often um, and probably can recognize it more often than, than we can. So I want to be able to bring my audience some um, education on certain things that they might not be knowing about. So okay. that's why I reached out to you today to just try to see if you can shed some light on mental health and what that means to us. Like, what does it mean to be mentally healthy? What does it mean to be mentally healthy? Well, yes. as you know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And actually, Mental Health Awareness Month has been recognized since 1949. Okay, so, okay. you know, but here, I guess within the past 10, maybe not even that long, I guess, it becomes... Um, mental health has become more of a topic in, in the mainstream. Yes. You hear a lot of yeah. people, athletes, entertainers, and addressing the importance of, of mm -hmm. their mental health. But Mental Health Awareness Month has been around for quite a bit, for okay. quite a while. Being mentally healthy, I think, is uh, a certain aspect, and I, I look at um, each individual, each of us having sort of five aspects, physical, intellectual, social, spiritual, and mental. And mental being able to have that balance of uh, recognizing if I become emotional, can I handle those particular mm -hmm. emotions? Can I cope with what's going on with me emotionally? Okay. Um, am I aware of my emotional state and in a place where I can effectively manage it so that my 
my everyday judgment, my ability to cope with uh, ordinary life events mm -hmm. isn't significantly <clears throat> impaired. Okay. Okay. Well, I want you to try the barbecue first because you said you, you had, had over it, there. and you it's don't so waste good. No time, honey. I you know. Don't hey, this is there. a lunch and learn, so we got to eat and talk and get through this. Mm. I know you got clients mm. to see. That's different. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It is um, <clears throat> refreshing, light lunch. Do y'all like chicken salad out there? What are your favorite flavors? Mm. So this is the barbecue. Mm -hmm. Like try the lemon basil now. I didn't get that, but that is one of my faves. Hold on, I'll cleanse. Cleanse the palate. your palate. Okay, and y'all know what I'm drinking on. I'm drinking on sweet tea. What do you got over there? Strawberry lemonade. Really it's good. Delicious. Okay. Oh, yeah. Have you ever done anything like this? Eat and talk on camera. And <laughs> Not on camera. But, okay. you know, I mentioned um, uh, the nonprofit Brother Let's Talk. So just to give you a little background on it, um, um, it's a group of black mental health professionals. So we came together in 2017 after viewing, um, after uh, Stevie Stevens okay. recorded himself on Facebook live, the killing of Robert Godwin. It was Easter Sunday, 2017. Stevie Stevens... Um, goes into this this diatribe before he kills uh, Mr. Godwin where um, a fraternity brother of his called him and was trying to talk him down because he had posted what he had planned to do mm. and his friend calls and it's like man you don't need to go do this and Stevie is like you know I'm tired of being the butt of jokes every time I come to y'all y'all blow me off and you know not taking me serious and so he felt that his only recourse of being rejected by this young lady mm -hmm. was to go out and kill someone and so he he rolls up on mr godwin and asks him does he know um this lady mm. uh, stevie stevens ex-girlfriend i believe it is but oh, mr wow. godwin is like no i don't know him mm -hmm. but he shoots this man oh my god and so when i saw that just being a black man and knowing that a lot of trauma that black men have gone through unaddressed you know there are so many not just men, but so many people out there who have been traumatized in some sense, where um, have dealt with some issue that went unaddressed mm -hmm. and became depression or became um, some um, uh, some tirade. But mm -hmm. um, when I saw that, I thought um, we got to do something. Somebody has to do something. You know, yeah. there's too many men walking around with this issue. So let's try to. Um, create an environment where men want to come together mm -hmm. and talk about mental health yeah. and that wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> when, once you say it's mental health, men are like, ah, I don't want to yeah. And so what we did was um, through planning and, you know, we were, we were meeting um, very often trying to identify a way that we could bring men together and have this mm. conversation. And so we developed barbershop talks. Um, we'd have a barbershop talk on a Sunday afternoon, but we'd have uh, food there with us so we could have conversation we we're eating because something about having a plate of food in front of oh, you oh yeah and, and just makes it gets you to talking it does it, i mean the mouth already moving so you <laughs> might as well <laughs> start talking right so um each barbershop talk will have um one of our one of our team members um ralph sams uh makes this phenomenal soul slaw i mean it's just off the oh chain. yeah he won't give me the recipe oh. but i'm like every time we have it, you got to bring that soul slaw <laughs> but he he prepare food and um we'll have conversation and um just talk around some of those topics that men don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to address but the, the you have mental health professionals in the room facilitating the, convers the mm -hmm. conversation mental health professionals that look like them Okay. Because for so long, black men didn't necessarily trust that no. mental health field, yeah. well, the medical field, because yeah. you know you look through through history, so many atrocities have been um, uh, been um, committed against mm -hmm. uh, people of color. Yeah. And so there's this lack of trust that was there. And so what we were trying to do, just in in our community, in our city, is try to bridge that that trust. Wow. So y'all were eating and just really conversations were flowing yeah. how real do those conversations get when when y'all are in there with those guys on the barbershop talk well of course we you know we don't record it's it. not a counseling session it's just okay. an opportunity for them to come in whatever questions they have about uh, mental health about the mental health field about mm -hmm. you know uh, the various disciplines um, 
and then just kind of try to identify certain stigma okay. that exists. So our our uh, our motto is stop the stigma, okay. address the stress. It's working to identify the stigma that, that, that's there, that's been perpetuated over the years, okay. and to help them to find ways to address the stress that they're dealing with. So those conversations get pretty deep. They can oh, get, yeah. get very deep. I think by us being in the community early on, because mm-hmm. as I said, in 2000, from 2017 up until 2021, um, we pretty much financed everything out of pocket. We're going out into the community. We were um, not not just the barbershop talks. We will also have community events where okay. men and women are invited. Um, we're going into the schools and letting people uh, be aware of what we're doing. Wow. And so when the opportunity came for that grant, um, there were already people who were calling. And oftentimes what we would do is uh, refer them to someone and let them know what those services are that mm-hmm. someone... Uh, may be seeking but now we were able to say hey you know we can provide four free sessions and we have a provider in our network that can address your concern are you interested okay and so um, you know that that word of mouth I think is is pretty good but yeah. also we're um, we're on the web brotherlesstalk.com what things did y'all uncover with men that some of the things that they may face mostly um, what we uncovered is that they wanted to talk Okay. They wanted that, that that safe space, that safe environment, where they felt that the person sitting across, across from them understood what they were going through. Okay. You know, counseling is really about rapport. Yeah. Developing that relationship where you feel comfortable with the person sitting across from you that I can't open up to you. Okay. And so that has to be established where there's this level of trust that you understand where I'm coming from. Without judgment. Without judgment. So yeah. our first event in 2017 um, was just a, our inaugural event to just kind of let people know what we were doing. Okay. We had um, over 100 people to attend. Wow. And I had planned just for one event. I said, let's have this one event where we'll have a, a licensed professional counselor, a licensed uh, social worker, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and a, a pastor from the community, okay, all to come in and talk about mental health from their individual perspective, mm-hmm. really to allow uh, people to hear, you know, the various disciplines, but then also different perspectives on mental health, and then to um, just help to uh, identify and talk about certain stigma that exists. Okay, and so um, we were really surprised that after that session, after that first event. People were like, y'all got to do this again. Yeah. Yeah, I really need to do this again. I, wow. I enjoy being able to come here and, and talk and kind of open up. And from there is when we got the idea, okay, where can we have, um, because that first event wasn't held at, at a barbershop. Okay. And so we were like, well, where can we come together to have these conversations? And where is it that men usually gather to, mm-hmm. to talk? Yeah. You know, so. So that's how the barbershop came. Wanted to provide them, you know, um, the ability not just to uh, to have that conversation, not that they go in and diagnose or anything, but just being able to identify certain things and say, well, have you ever thought about talking to a therapist? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes someone introducing that idea to someone where they may have thought about it, but then someone else brings that up, gives them a little more confidence yeah. and security in that, oh, okay, it's okay. It's kind of like, oh, you do it too? And then yeah. you feel, you know, you, you kind feel of, accepted. Right. Yeah. Right. And so we felt uh, barbers being able to have that conversation, but also having that list of uh, resources to yeah. say, hey, here's an agency that you can call. Oh, that's Contact so good. Contact Brother Let's Talk. And so we, we get a lot of referrals that yeah. way. Um, our number 205-259-6304. 259-6304. And they would call and... Um, contact uh, one of our representatives who identify what the issue is and we just try to pair them with uh, a therapist according to their availability yeah. okay. be it um, uh, virtual or in person and um, based on their issue and um, allow them to come in and see a therapist because yeah. a lot of times these are uh, their first time talking with someone yeah. you know and so yeah. we want to create this you know safe judgment free uh, yeah. zone that this is your first time opening up, and so we wanted to, to continue to mm-hmm. allow that opportunity for that healing to, to take place because I mm-hmm. feel that <clears throat> there are so many families that, that have been destroyed because someone didn't have the capacity or the coping skills to address.
you know, um, the marriage is hurt. The relationship between parent and child is hurt. And that affects the family, that affects oh. the community, and that, that affects yeah. our, our nation. I just really wanted to ask about, like, family secrets that cause, like, so much trauma that gets unaddressed and how it hurts the whole family. Wow. You know, I think a lot of what we consider as generational trauma mm -hmm. can be mental health issues that have just gone unaddressed. I often you know? talk about when I was younger and coming up, and just in, in, in our neighborhood, and I remember um, my grandfather, you know, he'll wake me up five o'clock on a Saturday morning after having just playing football in high school. And But I'm thankful that he mm -hmm. woke me up and got me out there to cut the grass. But I can remember coming out some mornings and next door to us was, uh, was a neighbor um, who we had known that he had served in the military and when, when he got home, everybody just said, you know, he kind of, he shell shot, you know, mm -hmm. don't, don't bother him. He'd just sit over there on the porch, just kind of rocking, staring into space. And my, my granddad would be like, don't go on over there messing with Robert because you, you know he ain't right. Yeah. You know, he shell shot, you leave him alone. Or the neighbor who was directly across the street from uh, my grandparents' house, as kids, we would play kickball and then the ball rolled in his yard. It's a done deal. You better not go in his yard getting that ball out. Because you not, you not, you don't know what type of reaction you're going to get oh, from Oh, yeah, he'll come out with a gun. Y'all oh, get wow. out cussing. Y'all get oh, out my wow. yard. But yeah. prior to that, prior to his wife dying, he was a very kind, pleasant man. Mm. You know? Or the neighbor who was a couple of houses down who would just kind of walk up, the, up and down the street and just mumbling to only someone that he could see. You know, he was just ranting and raving and but my grandfather would be like don't go over there messing with Robert don't go over there messing with Mr. Mr. Billy or don't go messing with Paul because you know they ain't right yeah but he it wasn't addressed as possible PTSD yes or the grief that the widower mm -hmm. was dealing with or the schizophrenia oh. that David may be dealing yeah. with and it was not addressed it mm -hmm. was just don't go messing with those folks because you know they ain't right wow you know and that's that that has to change Mm -hmm. We have to, in Mental Health Awareness Month, you know, having this conversation during this time, having conversations and talking with everyone out there about the importance of mental health, it kind of helps to remove that stigma, yes. open the conversation up and identify and be able to identify when we see someone that we know that, you know, a day ago or a week ago, their, their behavior, their mood was much different, mm -hmm. but we noticed some, some very significant changes. But now we feel more confident in ourselves to say, hey, let me come and talk to you. Yeah. And we were hoping that, you know, just with that, that phrase, brother, let's talk. Wow. That means, you know, hey, I'm here to talk. Yes. I'm here to listen. And I can pro uh, help to provide those resources. That is so powerful. But this is why I really wanted to bring a lunch and learn to the audience. Um, you know, get some, get some um, understanding myself. Because I know that if I got questions, um, my audience has questions. And that Brother Less Talk organization is just so powerful because, like you mentioned, uh, people want to be heard. And right. our men are the core of, of society. And um, I kind of want to hit on something about um, some of the social injustice that went on uh, not only during the pandemic, it was highlighted during the pandemic, but, um, you know, some of the things with Trayvon Martin and uh, Philando Castile and some of the names. Like, what did that do for us um, as people um, just dealing with all that social injustice, oh. especially during the pandemic? Yeah, people out in the street rioting. Oh, you know? yes. People were angry and they were upset because, one, it has gone on too long, and two you know, gone on so long and sometimes act like it didn't occur. Yes. You know? Yeah. But now, you're not just with uh, with social media and um, we can almost get news instantly now and yeah. see what's going on around the world, but it was an opportunity and it's, it's a tragedy that, you know, George Floyd's death um, caused people to say, whoa, wait a minute, this this does this does happen, yeah. you know? And, and I really hate, we can go back to uh, Colin Kaepernick and him it, he took a knee against the brutality that was um, that was occurring it wasn't against the American flag or the American mm -hmm. people but that message got twisted yeah. you know and I think that kind of just fed into into more anger where so yeah. many things have gone on that seem you know um, 
as if there was no no justice for um, mm. for for black people, yeah. and so that anger was kind of fueled and it and it boiled over and yeah. to people are out in the street and um, rioting. Um, but um, I think also it shed the light on um, for a lot of people that hey this does occur and. I wasn't paying attention to it. Now I see it. So yes. what is it that I can do yeah. to help heal others? Mm -hmm. And um, I wrote down a few things that I wanted to make sure I hit on. But I do want to ask about, and this actually what I, uh, some a story recently came across uh, my timeline recently. And um, it was about a young uh, cheerleader who committed suicide uh, recently. Uh, she was a cheerleader. Her name was Lana Miller. And she was a cheerleader at Southern University, a freshman. Mm -hmm. She posted a suicide note on social media recently, mm -hmm. like a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And this statement here, just let it sink in while you eat. Um, I have been surrounded by people who may have honestly thought that I was okay, but I haven't been okay for a while. I struggle so much through just this year alone. To the people in my life, I pray you learn to vocalize your feelings and get help always and that stunned so many people and it's been viral on social media and um, you know Miss USA committed suicide her mom has spoke out about depression and it sounds like this young lady was facing some of those same challenges uh, kind of talk to us about um, you know not just black women but we're seeing it more in black women hmm. you know <clears throat> There's a, um, a portion in there where you said she prayed they learn to vocalize oh, yes. what they're feeling. And yes. I think there are, there are so many of us who, and I know specifically among, among men, it's like we don't necessarily, we're not taught how to adequately, adequately, adequately express in words how we're feeling. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I think a young man may be told you know, it's okay to express anger, yeah. but it's, it's not cool to express fear and guilt, yeah. you know. Um, but her words, and I pray you learn to vocalize your feelings, and I think that's so important, being able to adequately express how I feel, be able to, but <laughs> another part of that is I can express it, but will you listen? Mm -hmm. You know, will will I feel validated in yeah. in saying what I'm saying, or will you just nah? You don't. You, yeah. that's not what you feel. You're making it up. It's or, in your head. Exactly. And there are so many cases where um, kids have gone to their parents or, or 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 an adult and said that this thing is going on, and they've been like, well, no, nah, that's not what's going on. Yeah. Uh, your family member wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You making this up. But having that voice to be able to express how you feel, but also feel that um, you're heard and that, you know, something will be done. You know, um, I uh, oftentimes will tell clients that if you're not talking to someone, start writing it down. Journaling, okay. I think, is, is huge. Being able to get that, that, um, that thought out, be able to get that emotion out. And I, there's just something about writing things out, you know, because sometimes it's, one way in your head, but as you write it down, you it's like, well, no, that's not it, and you kind of kind of shape it and form it to what it what mm -hmm. it really is. But being able to talk to someone is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, talk therapy is huge. And there's, you know, a misconception about talking to someone and and therapy because we hear so much in the uh, we've heard over the years in especially our community. Um, that you're crazy if you go talk to someone. Like, I mean, that's that in itself is um, sensationalizing the stigma that goes with addressing um, mental health issues, whether it be someone just dealing with a little anxiety here and there, or are they really suffering through the silence and not speaking out because they don't want to be looked at as crazy? Yeah. I think, you know, we're such a resilient people that, and I'm, you think of all the things that we've gone through and just kind of had to teach ourselves and our, and our, and our kids and, you know, and some of the older generations to just kind of be, be tough to kind of look out for yourself and just kind of suck it up and, and move through it. And that, that stigma, especially for men that, you know, if you, 
have some sort of emotion that you're dealing with where you might find yourself disappointed or down or sad or whatever you you know you being crazy or mm-hmm. you being less than a man yes. you know but I think the weakness is really not being able to um, identify what's going on with me and not being willing to address it yeah you know if I feel that you know a lot of times we look at anger as something somebody else did to us you did yes. something that I'm angry mm-hmm. as opposed to understanding that I'm angry because it's the way that I look at it mm. you know if we all we all don't get angry about the same thing yeah and that's because we look at things differently mm-hmm. and that's where the anger comes from it's how I view this particular situation so if there's anger about it and I'm angry you know about it then what is a different way that I can look at it that I don't feel this emotion mm. You know, we feel sometimes or believe that um, other people cause our emotions. Okay. But I believe it's, you know, our thoughts about certain things, Mm -hmm. our perspective about things. And we could develop a certain way of looking at things that lends to some of that distorted way of thinking. Mm -hmm. We can learn to view view the world in such a way that... um, that is just irrational. Yeah. But that's that's the way we've been taught. That's the way mm-hmm. we've always looked at it. Yeah. But not recognizing that it's because the way I look at it that I that I develop these sort of emotions okay. behind it. So being able to have that level of self awareness, recognize yes. not only what I think but also um, how I think, but I can change that thought and and in essence, help to change my emotion. Oh, yes. And then change the way I behave. Oh, yeah. I love that. And I think looking in the mirror sometimes is the hardest thing to do (laughs) and to be self-aware because you oftentimes find people that just blame everybody else for Mm -hmm. everything that's bad happening around them. And uh, you're saying that really sometimes it's us looking within ourselves. That's where it starts. It starts with us. I can't change you and you can't change me. Yeah. Right? I have to change myself and a lot of times and it's especially sometimes working with couples <laughs> he's doing this and if he just oh. stopped doing that and if she just stopped doing this and like well, ah, start with self okay start with self and being able to uh, you know again search self that level of self-awareness and why is this bothering me so much mm. or why am I looking at it this way okay and you know again it could be that you know, some things may have occurred in early in life and now you don't trust men or you don't trust oh. women or you look at situations or even groups of people this particular way because that's how you were brought up, Yeah. you know? And so being able to kind of search self and if there are some things that are going on that, you know, you are experiencing a negative emotion or angry or deeply disappointed or, or, or truly saddened or well, what is a different way of, mm-hmm. of thinking about this looking at the situation that this emotion isn't as intense yeah that's what a, a person learns to view the world a certain way their their perception of, of life how they should be treated in the world how the world should treat them mm-hmm. all of that occurs from our our, our experiences growing up yeah. you know um a lot of times it could be did you make the team and were you able to cope with not making it or you know did you uh, have healthy interaction with your parents and your peers and learn to uh, cope with or overcome certain certain things mm-hmm. and that can impact just throughout our lives how we continue to move through the world and you know sometimes a person may hold on to uh, certain issues that occurred um, with family members or friends 15 20 years mm-hmm. ago um, but when you think of childhood trauma and um, I guess you could have a list of things that oh, a child yeah. may go through that um, causes them to um, to be traumatized and would that affect them as an adult yes very much so um, especially if it's something that went on uh, untreated yeah and, and a lot of times people may not have that access to care where that okay. child can treat it or even be in an environment where they feel safe to open up and talk about it mm-hmm. you know I encourage parents to have daily conversations with their kids about their friends, their interactions at school, what okay. was great about the day, what was bad about the day, mm-hmm. what what could have happened that, what happened that made the day bad or what happened that made the day good, you know, okay. and then also uh, just being able to uh, uh, give that child um, 
uh, the opportunity to, to, to process, to talk, to open up and have someone that they know that um, will listen. Yeah. You know, I think uh, sometimes in our disciplining, um, especially when it's not done correctly, that child will kind of close up yes. and not be willing to 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 talk with their parent, you yeah. know, for fear of the punishment that's going to oh, come yeah. down. But discipline done correctly, um, knowing that it's uh, it's for instruction, for an opportunity to, to learn better and do better, and um, then accountability and responsibility that's taught as well. That child um, feels, uh, I guess, a greater sense of okay, this is someone that I can come talk to about you know what's going on with me in my day, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but when it when it goes unaddressed, it can carry into an adulthood. And I noticed that uh, in the presidential um, address, State of the Union address, mm-hmm. President Biden noted that our country is facing an unprecedented mental health crisis. Um, is this new, or you know, are we finally like addressing it and talking about it more? Is it new that we're in a mental health crisis? Yeah, given, you know, coming out of COVID, this okay, is something okay. that our generation hadn't really dealt with, okay. you know, and, you know, we talked on earlier about the isolation and um, the, the loss of family and friends, mm-hmm. you know, that affects us uh, huge, okay. uh, in, in a huge way. But also, um, we're in a space now where we're talking and addressing mental health like we never have before. Oh, yes. You know, you have... Um, yeah. um, entertainers, uh, athletes, um, people of, of um, high profile uh, addressing the importance of mental health and making that public stand to say, okay, my mental health is just as important as my physical health. Mm-hmm. And I get out here and perform physically, but if my mental health isn't right, you oh, know, yeah. I can get out here and hurt myself. Exactly. You know, yeah. where, you know, sometimes some athletes call it, you know, getting into your head, you know, mm-hmm. where you're just kind of overthinking and you know when you're doing that, you can't perform well. You're likely to injure yourself or someone else. Yeah. So we're now in a space in, in, in our nation where um, it's becoming, um, I guess, more mainstream to talk about mental health. And that's just because we're having conversations. Maybe 20, 30 years ago, it was, you know, you talk about mental health in any aspect. Oh, you're crazy. Yeah. You go down there and get you a crazy <laughs> child. Oh, gosh. You know, something like that. <laughs> but now it's like, you know, we'll have this conversation and, people are listening and they're saying well I know someone you can go talk to yes. or even they're saying well you know I see a therapist yes. and it's like Whoa. Uh, well the last thing um, if someone out there is experiencing um, any type of sadness or extended issues that may be more than just a typical feeling or even if they think someone close to them is dealing with some things that may need either you know counseling or something what do you recommend that they do? What steps should they take? Definitely reach out to that person. Uh, reach out for help. Um, each city may have their own crisis line or okay. that they may be able to reach out to. Um, but definitely, if you feel someone is in danger of hurting themselves or hurting someone, go to the, the nearest emergency room. Okay. Um, that'll help get the process started where they can get assessment and um, identify you know, just the level of care that they may need. Okay. But um, I would encourage you to definitely reach out with that to that person, talk with them, let them know that um, you're here, you're there to listen. Okay. Um, and not be judgmental, of course, mm-hmm. um, but to not just walk by and not say anything at all, you know. Yeah. Um, but having these conversations, you know, like we're doing now, but then also in those those private spaces where you're with your family and with your friends, and you identify that you know there's something a little different, you know talk about it yeah and and see just where that conversation may go mm-hmm. and and it leads to where you feel that they're going to hurt themselves or hurt someone else again you know follow up go into the emergency room or call the crisis line okay and um but the, the key thing is to talk yeah to have that conversation okay well i will be putting down in the description box uh your brother let's talk information mm-hmm the phone number that you provided, even if they just got some questions for you. Okay. Um, and uh, some other links to some other things that we kind of spoke on today. But um, I certainly want to appreciate your time, tell you thank you for, for the time today. I feel like I had a therapy session today. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm on Coco TTV. Yes. <laughs> yes, guys. We will see y'all next time. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.